problem is that we are fragmented in effort. That's why we cannot sort of small problems like uh, Somalia, this uh, Congo here, DRC, these are small problems. They are not big problems. But if you don't act together, what is small becomes big. And that's why, therefore, on the on number one on prosperity, you need an integrated approach. Number two, on strategic security, you need an integrated approach. The proof is that when we work together, we're able to solve the problem of the problems of the, of the colonialists who are refusing to go away. They were forced to go away by military defeat, not, not the talks on the table. Idi Amin here, who solved the problem of Idi Amin? It was some coordination among ourselves here. Mwari Mjerere with a few others. That's how we solve the problem of Idi Amin. And I can quote so many other problems. Somalia. Somalia would, would have been taken over by, by the Al Shabaab. But we, we stopped them. And although we are giving a, a half dose, it's a half dose there because of some confusion. But at least uh, that problem can be solved completely, uh, very easily. It is just lack of coordination, lack of uh, synchronized thinking. How do you build an army? What sort of army do you build? These are the conceptual misalignments. This one is thinking like this, this one is thinking like that. That's why you have all these endless literal problems, really, with very easy to solve. The issue of money, it's not money. It's not money we need. I have been building army for the last uh, more than 50 years with no money or very little money. That's how we were able to build our defense system here. Either with no money at all or with very little money. In 1976, Mwari Munyerere introduced me to Samora Mashel and I trained 28 boys in Montepoeg, in, in Mozambique. 28 boys. V, v into oit, as they call them in Portuguese. V into oit, 28. It is those 28 boys who built up, up this army, the one of Uganda. 28. So all this chaos which is going on is really an ideological problem. Because people don't know how to build an army whether you have money or not. Whether, whether I have money or not, am I not going to defend my family? How can you say, because I don't have money, I should not defend my family? It's a conceptual problem. So therefore, that's why we, we, we say that we, Africa is very strong. If we work together, there is no force that can defeat us. Then finally, the issue of fraternity. We always emphasize that you, you people, by the way, the people you, the Africans you are talking about, these are people who are similar. All these groups, I can talk, I, I can greet the Banyarwanda, I can greet the, the Barundi, I can, the, 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 uh, the Bahia in Tanzania, the Bazinza, Wakerewe. I can greet the Murembes in, in, in Western Kenya, the, 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 the South Sudan. I can speak with the Achodis there, with the, the Kakwas. That's why they were calling Idi Amin a Sudanese or Congolese, because they are more Kakwas in Sudan and in, in Congo than even here in Uganda. And we have Swahili. We have Swahili which is even easier to unite us. So that's why, therefore, when I get a chance like this, I, to talk to the intellectuals in their own specific field of, of law,
to bear in mind that this law will, will work better if the society changes. And if the society does not change, it, it may not work or it may even suffer a regression. Well, that's what's happening in some of these countries like Burma. Burma, Latin America, Somalia now, all these West African countries, Burkina Faso, Mali. So where is the, what are the lawyers doing there? In that case, what are they doing? Or the judges? If the society does not change, is it really safe? You think it, you are a sure way of... So that's why, therefore, I, I encourage all the intellectuals to interest themselves in the need for social economic transformation of, of Africa. Now, coming to SA, those people had a smart way of doing things. First of all, they have the House of Representatives, where, where voting is by, by population. The more numbers you have, the more delegates you have. But they also had a Senate where they smartly said, no, whether you are a big, a big province or a small one, you must have equal senators. Very smart, because you see, uh, Rhode Island with the 300,000 people. Otherwise, if you mishandle integration, it can backfire. I think this is really both in your area and in my area. It is both an issue of strategy, but also an issue of legality. Because, for instance, even here in a small land like Uganda, we had the issue of land. We used to have something we called Uganda Land Commission. This was controlling all the land in Uganda. They would be the one to give land to this one, to the other one, to the other one. When we came into government, I had mamas. Some of these people want to come and grab our land, meaning the tribal land, the tribal land. So I, I detected, I said, ah, okay, the land is no longer a Uganda matter. It is a district matter. You, the district, you handle your own land, the, the, the district land boards. The Uganda Land Commission will only handle the land of, of the government, the ranches, the government offices, and so on. Now they are there, they are the ones stealing the land. What would the, Uko Uko? Wanaiba Udongo Uko in the districts. But it removed the other poison of saying some people from the center want to come and steal our land, our land here in our, in, in our district. So in the integration, I would want to challenge the intellectuals, and, and, and including the lawyers, which are the matters that should be for integration, and which are the ones which should remain local. For instance, land. I don't think land should, be, should ever be a federal matter because that will divert us, will cause unnecessary arguments. It should always remain either a state matter or even in our cases it is a district matter. The, the district land boards. Yes, the, the central land board maintains some quality control to ensure that they are following the, the law. How about jobs? You hear people talking about jobs, jobs in the, in the bureaucracy. Uh -huh. Jobs. In the bureaucracy. 
Then how, how about jobs in the factories? All these issues you, you, should, you should think about, about them. What should be East African? What should remain country? What should go lower? To buy my milk, buy my beef, buy my bananas, buy my whatever I'm saying. The market, integrating the market. Then we can add other things, slowly, 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 but carefully. So I'm, there, I'm therefore very happy that you came for these seminars. These seminars will help, will help us to discuss. I know, I hear that Africans spend a lot of time watching football of European clubs. I've never watched, somebody asked me, which club do you, do you support? <laughs> Clubs. I was a footballer myself. I last played football in 1966. Once I got involved in these Ugandan issues, I forgot about football. Either to play or to watch. So, okay, you, you, you may be watching football, but please, these seminars are also good so that we, we, we come and brainstorm and bring up this issue, bring up that issue. So I'm really very happy. Hongera sana kuja kwenye majadiliano haya mungu awabariki. Thank you very much. I had some people talking somewhere. They were saying, you know, Africa is a big market. It was to speak somewhere where we were doing something. And the market of Africa is $3.4 trillion. Ah, then other, the, the audience clapped. So I felt embarrassed. Do these people know? that the economy of Japan, Japan alone, is 4.3 trillion. And here they are clapping for the, the economy of the whole of Africa, for three, whatever it is, 3.4 trillion. This is really not good. Sometimes I, I'm polite, I don't want to, but, but this, this lack of information must stop. To find that the whole of Africa is, I think the United States now is 20 something trillion dollars. The biggest, I think China must be like 14 trillion. Japan is number three in the size of the economy, it is four point something trillion. And here you are talking of the whole of Africa. And you see, you caught it as, as a good example. You are not embarrassed, you are not even looking down. It's really not good. It's not good. So this, this low level of GDP shows you the low level of mobilization. Because if we are mobilized, would, 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 our, our GDP would be much, much bigger. And it will be much bigger. So when we, we move on the other two areas, education for all, in government schools and free education, then full monetization of the economy, then soon we get into the problem of the market. Who will buy what you produce? Yes, Uganda has got a population of 43 million people, but this, this market is not enough. That's why Latin America, that's why uh, his Excellency Maduki was, was repeating my questions at Independence. I was asking, are there professors of economics in Africa? If they are there, why don't they see, see this? Even if the politicians didn't see it, but the, at least the scholars should see it and talk about it. Europe was not transformed by, by politicians. 
Adam Smith was not a politician. I don't think Adam Smith stood for elections anywhere. He was a scholar. He saw, he saw. Uh, Maynard Keynes, uh, he was not, uh, he was not, uh, was not a, a, a politician. He, he, these were scholars. Ricardo, these were not, <laughs> these were not politicians. So uh, expecting politicians, you know what happened with the politicians? If a drunkard is meet somewhere and they are drinking and elections come, they elect one of their drunkards, so you go and represent us. <laughs> now, <laughs> how do you expect this man to know all these problems? He, he can go and talk about a few things, about a few things, but to, to think that he, he will automatically have the vision to solve all these historical is not correct. Karl Marx, Karl Marx was not, uh, was not a politician. These were scholars. So what are the scholars doing? Why don't they see, why don't they see these dangerous uh, uh, tra trends in, in, in society and in, in the world? So one, if the people wake up and start producing and they are educated, you will find that the internal market of Uganda is not enough. 43 million people are not very many to support big production. As I say that independence, this is part of the problem of Latin America. Latin America has got a lot of resources in terms of water, rivers, what, but they are badly organized economically and politically. And therefore business cannot easily succeed there. That's why they are always in endless trouble. So therefore, for us here, we, 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 we said now, once you wake up, you will soon discover that the internal market is not enough. Therefore, you will realize that you need the regional and the continental market. Hence, the political integration, economic and political integration. That's why I'm very grateful to the, to the Wazei, Mzee Hassan Mwinyi, Mzee Arab Moy, Mzee Mukapa. Mwarim was still alive, he was supporting us. When we brought up this idea again, they supported it. And I'm really very, very grateful to that historical contribution by the elders, and you should always remember this. Then later on, we, Rwanda and Burundi came in, and South Sudan, DRC has now come in, and Somalia is coming, Somalia is coming. So this is the, the logic of integration, economic integration. We are integrating in order to deal with the issue of prosperity. Prosperity through what? through production of goods and services. Goods and services which need what? Need a market, a bigger market. The bigger, the better. Now, when you are dealing with the, the integration, you, you, you should do, I will come that at the end. Then the second element you are looking for is strategic security. Well, if Africa get, works together, there is no security problem we cannot, we cannot solve. In 1963, 36 countries met in Addis Ababa, African countries, which had just got independence. 